Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today to squeeze in a last minute video. I'm filming this very last minute. My makeup is rushed. My kids are asleep on the couch. I thought I'm going to put some makeup on. I'm going to film this. I want it done by the end of the year. Is my best products and worst products of 2022. Now I want to clarify these are mainly products that they're not products that released in 2022 some of them are um but a lot of them are just things that either i used a lot or came across in 2022 um and i don't want them to overlap with my 2021 favorites so i will put my 2021 favorites uh i'll link it in the in the description box but um yeah i try to show new things every year um but those a lot of those favorites are still favorites i looked back at it the other day and i was like yeah i still use a lot of those um the favorites sort of hold up all right i'm not going to beat around the bush i'm going to tell you my favorite palette of the year because if i need to stop filming because my kid wakes up um, i want this mentioned and i want credit to be given where credit is due uh, my most used palette of the year um, and my favorite palette of the year and the palette I'm wearing my eyes today the one that whenever I put it on like I'm wearing two shades today Whenever I put it on people are like you're looking fancy today or you're looking special today or your eye makeup's beautiful Or my neighbor the other day was like where are you going out today? You're going somewhere fancy and I'm like no, I'm just wearing this beautiful beast Glaminatrix cosmetics nearly natural palette hands down my favorite palette of the year a lot of people said they bought it based on my review and they love it and i'm glad i want everyone who loves sort of sparkly beautiful neutrals um, to experience this it is such a gorgeous palette glaminatrix cosmetics is an australian uh, indie brand and they are kicking goals and this by far in my opinion is their best palette i will link uh, i will list all the products i mention uh, in the description box and any reviews that i've done i did do a multi-look review on this i love it this palette consists of really really twinkly sparkly uh, shimmers and beautiful mattes this is nearly natural uh, because you can get natural effects but there's oh matey all right so my big boy woke up from his nap very upset that no one was there so I'm going to try to film this with him on my lap. So this palette has beautiful, twinkly, really nicely pigmented, easy to blend um, mattes and shimmers. And the shimmers are sparkly and twinkly and special. Not everyone's cup of tea on a daily basis, but it is mine. I love neutrals, but I love nice texture with neutrals. And this has just been my go-to palette. Whenever I want a nice look or something that looks a bit more elevated than just a basic eyeshadow this is what i go for every single time i've worn it to my grandfather's 90th birthday this year i've worn it to whatever occasion i go to i love it i'm getting very sweaty it's a very hot day today um yeah this by far is my most used palette my favorite palette and the one that i recommend to a lot of people it is stunning i do also love their colored palettes they brought out this year so i have the glamorous palette and also the nocturnal palette i was sent all of these but i would tell you in a heartbeat like the the nearly natural palette i would buy 10 times over if i use it up i'm going to buy it again this is the nocturnal it's again really beautiful uh consistency textures uh duochromes mattes but there's like grungy colors greens mustards um, just really, really beautiful colors. And the Glamorous is a little bit more cool toned. It's a little bit more jewel toned. Uh, again, quality is really beautiful. The effects are really beautiful. Um, but because they're colorful palettes, I don't wear them as, nearly as often as the um, Nearly Natural. But these work really beautifully in conjunction with each other. So you can use some of the neutrals to tone down some of the colors. You can use some colors to amp up the neutrals i often use them in conjunction so like some of the purples in the glamorous with some of the neutrals are gorgeous i just i love them so, so these are all kept in my top drawer like my most used sort of stuff um because even though i don't use the colored palettes too often if i'm going to wear a colored eyeshadow it's going to be probably from these palettes so um these by far glaminatrix have done a, such a good job this year and um they're an indie brand to watch and if you are after sparkly beautiful lovely quality nudes or a twist on nudes because it's like movie colors there's some sort of like grungy greens in there um this palette yeah my most used palette i love it so much and i again look at it it's beautiful what i'm wearing on my eyes today is this bronzy color down the bottom with that one there i often wear that sort of more rosy color with that one there um just a really really simple easy look and really effective um yeah i can't i can't praise this enough 
So that's definitely my favorite eyeshadow brand this year, but I want to give um, sort of runner-up props to a couple of products. One is a Charlotte Tilbury palette. This is the Instant Eye Palette Smoky Eyes of Forever. Um, I got this in a Charlotte Tilbury uh, mystery box. So it was actually I think, the Holiday 2021 palette. It is beautiful. Um, the shimmers are very, very twinkly and beautiful. Um, the mattes blend really, really nicely. So this is a more subdued sort of colorful palette. But again, this is one that I reach for not as often as the Nearly Natural, I'm just gonna say but it did surprise me a lot. I'm just bummed that this year they didn't bring out a big palette like this because I'm now confident in the quality of it. Um, and if I liked the color story, I would have bought it, but this year they brought out single eyeshadows. So um, yeah, this didn't happen this Christmas, but I, it would have been on my radar. So uh, yeah, that's a runner up as a, a favorite. And another thing that I've been using a lot as well for eyeshadows is just my MAC Duo that I created this year. Oh, I could go on off on a tangent, but I think I'm gonna do a, create a whole video about it. Um, anyway, I got these two MAC shades. I think it's Soft Brown, which is the matte, and Woodwinked, which is the shimmer. Beautiful, beautiful, everyday. Um, similar sort of coloring as I'm wearing today, but less twinkly. Um, and this is just goes in my makeup bag, my travel bag. And I, I actually got these two shades. I bought the little duo, but the two shades I got as back to MAC products. And, and MAC have just announced that they're discontinuing back to MAC in Australia anyway, as of I think the 31st of March. I'm not happy, Jen. I'm just gonna tell you, not happy. I'm gonna do a video talking about it. And I'm also think I might do a three month MAC project pan to try to use up as much MAC and back to MAC them before they stop the Back to Mac program. Um, if you weren't familiar, Back to Mac has been happening for ages. You trade in six empty packaging and you get a single eyeshadow or a lipstick um, for like in exchange. So it's a recycle program and it's been something I love. Um, it's something that keeps me going to Mac stores and browsing stuff and buying stuff and recycling stuff. So I think it's a real shame that they got rid of that program. Um, and I watch out for a Mac project pan because it's happening and I'm going to have a rant in that about why I think it's a bad decision to end it um, and what they say about it and da 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 da. So yeah, that's, that's a thing. That's a thing. But I did enjoy having this duo. In terms of the quality and the finish of this, like it's a basic shimmer and a basic matte. You're not going to get like outstanding finishes. It's not a duo chrome. It's not a sparkle. It's not a this and that, but it's just such a basic everyday eye look. Very simple to create. I really enjoy this duo and I keep using it so that's good speaking of mac um one product that has been in my project pan and i've had this for years and years and years but i want to give it props because i've used it a lot this year i'm wearing it on my face today and i am obsessed with it and the storm's coming so it keeps getting darker and darker and darker um anyway this is stereo rose it's a mineralized skin finish and i i love it i think this is really really great i don't think i ever used this properly before. I use it sort of as a highlighter and it was sort of, I didn't like it, but as an all over shimmery blush, I've been obsessing about this. Um, it's been my blush of the year. And again, this is going to be something I'm going to try to pan by the end of March so I can back to Mac it. Um, but yeah, if you've got stereo rose, pull it out, have some fun with it. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, and yeah, I can't say nicer things. I feel like whenever I wear it, it's like my makeup I'm having a better makeup day. So even if I just put a bit of powder on and a little bit of that, you've got the glowing cheeks, you've got a bit of color and it just makes everything look a little bit nicer and you feel a little bit more awake and a little bit more refreshed. It's just one of those products that just, I love it. I think it's beautiful. A more recent thing that I've discovered, which I really like, this is one of those viral products that I only tried in a holiday Christmas pack. This is by Charlotte Tilbury and it's the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. It's a blush effectively in pink gasm. It's a very pink shimmery cream blush. Um, I think it's really really beautiful and it gives a really nice effect on the cheeks. Blends easily, blends over a set base or of course on a not set base um, but it does give a similar effect as this like a blush highlighter in one which I think is great on a daily basis. Again elevates your look, makes you look a little bit more like I don't know, glowy, ethereal, um, but it's a like one step blush and highlighter and it's it's really, really nice. So I this is a mini, got it in a holiday pack. I understand why this went viral. It's very, very pretty, um, but I think the effect is similar to Stereo Rose. It's just that Stereo Rose is a powder product. 
Um, but this is yeah beautiful. So I do like that. While we're talking about cheeks, I want to mention these products from Hindash. I recently did a review and I, I love these. Um, so these are the color fluid. There's four shades available. Um, there's like a pinky rose shade, an orange, a tan and a dark brown. And these are pretty much cream products that you put anywhere and everywhere. The reason why I'm mentioning these now is because you can actually create a product like this, like a dupe for it. If you have any sort of champagne liquid highlighter and you put a dot of this shade, which is hardest, you can create that liquidy blush shimmery effect which is really really lovely so again i did a full review of these but um they're beautiful as an eyeshadow i particularly love this tan one as a liquid matte eyeshadow it's the most stunning shade it is really flattering in the eye it lasts all day it blends nicely this is also a really nice bronzer um these are really nice blushes um, you can mix them with your foundation to sort of sheer them out or you can just sort of dot them on your unset base, buff them in really quickly because they do set really quickly. Um, very, very beautiful products. They work on the lips. I prefer them over a lip balm, so they're not so dry because these dry down to matte. But these are the most multi-purpose products I've ever tried. As an eyeliner, they're great. As a brow product, they work a little bit warm uh, for my brows, but... They all work. Beautiful, 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 most multi-purpose products I've ever tried. I keep them in my um, makeup bag. I think they're great. Also can create really, really simple monochromatic looks. So I've done it with the pink. Um, I can also do it with the brown where I can just put my base on and then literally put this dot dot on the eyes, blend it out with a fluffy brush, dot it on the face a little bit, blend it out with like a duo fiber brush and then also dot a little bit on the lips and you've got a full sort of colored makeup look and these two shades work really well for me and my coloring um, as a monochromatic look. So I love these. I think they're fantastic. The formula is divine. Really, really good product. My two favorite lip products of the year. Um, I, To be fair, I haven't tried too many new lip formulas because I've been decluttering my lip collection. But what I'm wearing today is actually from Black Moon Cosmetics. And these are the Sinister Satin Lipsticks. Oh my God, I love these. A few people have messaged me saying that they've bought them on my recommendations and they love them. They're just your standard like lipstick formula. They're, this is the this is the formula. This is the trick or treat shade. So it's this pumpkin-y brown color. Um, very pigmented, very easy to apply. They last really well. Um, they've got a satin finish. So they're not, I would call them just like a cream finish. They're not shiny, but they're not matte. Um, they are just the most beautiful traditional lipstick formula and they come in really, really unique shades. This is my most worn one, my favorite one, but they've got this beautiful dark brown called Werewolf. Is this the one here? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful sort of chocolate dark brown, which I love. They've got like a sparkly green, which is amazing. They've got a couple of reds. They've got a black. They've got a purple. They've got a blue. They've got such nice shades. They have a nude. Um, I look, and if Black Moon Cosmetics are watching this, I love your formula. Amazing, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I want to see more shades. We can talk, we can talk. I'm thinking, I want to see like a nudie vintage peach and it can be called like um, Rosemary from like Rosemary's Baby because that's kind of like the era that that vintage peach is around. I want a fiery orange red, it can be called like Carrie or something. I just want to see more shades because I've got really, really unique colors. Have they got like, do they have a gray? No, I think they've just got a black, but like they've got really, really unique colors, which are really cool and suit the brand. But I feel like this formula could do so well if they had more shades that a lot of people would wear on a daily basis. So different sort of nudes, um, different sort of reds, different sort of pinks. The names are all inspired by horror movies. I'd love to see a, like a neon um, fuchsia one or something inspired like maybe named after like an 80s horror film I don't know I think yeah I want to see more in the range because these colors even though I love them I think they're really flattering I don't wear them on a daily basis and I want to wear these on a daily basis because they're divine so that's definitely my favorite lip formula followed by the new MAC formula this is a powder kiss velvet blur slim stick so it's sort of like a more luxurious um, more pigmented and long wearing version of their powder kiss lipsticks. This shade is called over the taupe. It's a beautiful sort of deep brownie nude and I love it. I also have two reds. They're in my handbag and I, I don't know where my handbag is, but I've got three of them. And the fact that they're in my handbag tells you I use them 
a lot. They're just really beautiful formula. They give that sort of soft matte effect, but it's not really dry um, and it lasts a really long time. The nude ones don't last as long as the reds, but they're gorgeous. And I think because it's got that some smaller bullet, it's it just feels a little bit more luxurious. Like these feel really luxurious and high end, but also they're really precise to put on. So I love these. Like I said, I've got three of them. Two of them are in my handbag somewhere in my house or my car. I don't know where they are, um, but I use them all the time. They're really, really beautiful. A couple of eyeliners I want to talk about, and I'm actually wearing these today. I don't know if you can see. I might zoom in so you can see. Um, Lethal Cosmetics released, they have these gel liners, um, and I really love this one in Polarity. It's like a denim blue. Um, no, that's the cap. Um, this is beautiful. It's like a mix between... A blue but it's got like a little bit of aqua in it I just think it's the most beautiful mid-tone blue I love 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 it if you do buy these I do recommend um, buying their uh, rehydrating liquid with them as well because they they can dry out they're very very creamy the other one I have has already started drying out I do have Duraline so I can rehydrate them not a problem but um, they're very, very nice, last really well, apply really nicely, and that color I love. So I am wearing that on my waterline and also as a winged liner, but I've also put a green liner over the top just to make it a bit shimmery, and these are from Kaleidos. They're the next liners that I really love this year. So these are called the Epiphany Glow Melt-On Eyeliners, I'm pretty sure. Now the whole thing about these is that they're multi-chrome. Now there are two shades that look very multi-chrome, but the ones I reach for the most are the greens and the purple, just because they're a really, really beautiful, vibrant, um, metallic eyeliner. Um, I've got this one, which is in the shade Limelight. This is layered over the um just as like a bit of a topper but it's beautiful lay it over the gel just to add some shimmer to it um i also really love the shade seven seas which is just another sort of greeny color this one's a little bit more grass green but they do have different like when they catch a light in different directions they look slightly different but i just love these as shimmery eyeliners at the moment i see like a bluey purple and like a teal but straight on you see like a grass green and like a goldy green um, and then also the shade night of creation is the most gorgeous purple i use these a lot again um, i wish these are a little bit creamier so they could apply a little bit more pigmented um, but this one shifts from like i see red then it's purple and then in another light it's blue so these are really really stunning but i feel like um yeah if they were a little bit more pigmented a little bit creamier they would get a bolder effect but i like layering them on top of like a black gel liner or a blue gel liner just to add a little bit of vibrancy and i might zoom in so you can see what i've done today so hopefully you can see that lethal cosmetics color on my waterline and then i had my the lethal cosmetics um, gel liner on my top lash line. So that first green that I swatched, I put that over the top and you can see it's just added this like dimension of like an aqua kind of effect, which I think is really pretty. So okay, mommy. what's up, Bubby? Do you want to show how beautiful your makeup is? Other side, other side, there it is. Beautiful glaminatrix, glamorous purple. Why? Why? Because you put it on your face, buddy. All right, I'm going to rush through this because my kid is playing with makeup. Um, two base products I've really liked this year. I haven't actually bought many base products or high, higher end base products. I'm trying to use stuff I've already got. But the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, I think I've got the shade Light. I really like it because it's a setting powder that adds a little bit of luminosity. Yeah, this one's actually done, sweetheart. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, usually, like these sort of loose powders are very matte and very setting whereas this has a little bit of sheen to it so it makes your skin look natural so sets your makeup which is great for oily skin people but it doesn't make everything look matte 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 which i don't always want so i really like this really affordable really dig it you're going to look at that one just be careful with that one it's so hot today i've just realized i've sweated off all my makeup on my mustache area so I've just touched it up with this, which is another product that I've really liked this year. It's the Flawless Brightening Concealer from e.l.f. Um, I don't like really, really heavy under eye. Like a lot of people like the more pigment, the better. The really, really high coverage under eye concealer. And it just looks like you've got like two patches of paint and then it doesn't match the rest of your face. I actually really like this concealer. It's um, I don't like the brush applicator, but it is like a lighter sort of concealer it does have a bit of dewiness to it 
but I do set it with powder so um, it tends to set fairly well um, but if you've got dry skin you'll just like it as it is and it's just like a lighter brightening under eye concealer it sort of makes you look a little bit more awake and a little bit more perfected but it doesn't look like you're wearing a lot of makeup so I like this on a daily basis as well they're the two sort of elf products that I discovered this year that um, I think are really great I discovered a lot that were crap as well I could mention probably a handful of them in my fails at the end of this um, I might mention a couple but I've gotten rid of a lot of them because I just didn't like a lot of elf but I discovered a a couple of things that I really do like. So that's all the makeup, but there were other beauty products I really liked this year. Um, this was my favorite fragrance. It's by Floral Street. It's a sunflower, uh, sunflower pop fragrance. And it's essentially like, it's not, doesn't smell like sunflowers. Uh, it doesn't even smell floral. It smells like passion fruit. Um, and I think it's really nice. It's a nice summery fragrance, um, which is summer at the moment in Australia. So I really like this. I've sort of been using it sparingly. I've been trying to pan a couple of perfumes, but this is when I'm going out, I reach for this one. In terms of skincare, um, I really have enjoyed the CeraVe. This is the Hydrating Foaming Oil Cleanser. This was recommended by a, a subscriber or viewer. When I did a trying your recommendations video, I tried this. I really like it. It's at my sink. I've nearly finished it. Uh, I am gonna try a few other cleansers from this range because when I was looking at reviews a lot of people are saying that they like other ones better than this but what I like about this oil one is not only does it work really well at removing your makeup it doesn't feel like it strips your skin of oil so even though I've got oily skin I wear makeup I want my makeup off my face but I don't want my natural oils to be completely stripped from my face to feel like tight and uncomfortable so it doesn't do that um, this also sort of works a little bit like a oil cleanser whereas if you put it on your dry skin it can melt down your makeup a little bit and then you can sort of jump in the shower or wash off your face um, so it's not designed as an oil cleanser but you, in a pinch you can sort of use it that way um, but what I think is also really great about this is because it's quite thin um, it's very effective at removing your makeup but it's easy to rinse off I find that gel cleansers that sort of are quite thick on the face and take a lot of rinsing I don't like this rinses off really easily so I tend to use it a lot um, so yeah dig this the last two favorites are other skincare products I love the Mecca um, to save face SPF 50 plus sunscreen I feel like there's a lot of good sunscreens out there these days I'm not super picky I've tried a lot of really good ones lately but I really like the consistency of this it's quite thick um, but it's not like oily thick. It's just like a nice lotion-y thick. So it sort of feels like it is a moisturizer and SPF in one. Um, and it just feels really comfortable on the skin. It sort of works as like a primer under a foundation as well. So it's not, again, not greasy, not oily, not like gross sunscreen. It's like a luxurious thick sunscreen. So I really dig this. Um, and it's something like, yeah, it just feels like a nice... A nice lotion it's starting to get a bit grippy so again thick but like nice great base good on its own it's not too shiny uh, I just really like this sunscreen so if you're in Australia or New Zealand and you want a good sunscreen I really recommend the Mecca Cosmetica to say face sunscreen and I can't have a year without talking about a Paula's Choice product because last year I sort of discovered that I like a lot of Paula's Choice I love this intensive wrinkle repair retinol serum this is like um, a retinol oil so it's not a high concentration of retinol so it's not a really strong retinol but it's a really nice face oil that has retinol in it um, and it's just a nice product to use in the evening uh, and that's sort of been yeah something I've been using all year I think I actually used up one of these and this is my second and this is nearly used up I've got like not much to go when I actually pump it out it's like so um, it's a product that I really enjoy and I will repurchase because it's it's lovely it's a nice face oil all right time to talk about a few fails now I try to avoid hating products it just it's a waste of energy and I try not to waste my money on products that might be bad I did buy a lot of elf this year there were a lot of products in there that I disliked um, I do have a whole video about um, sort of like the best and the worst of elf that I've tried and there were quite a lot of products I really disliked their eyeliner was super scratchy and horrible to use I really didn't like their putty primer there were quite a few products in there that I really disliked. Um, another product that I gave a bad review on was this Too Faced palette. I wanted to love this. 
Uh, this is the Born This Way Sunset Stripped Palette. Um, and I love the first Born This Way palette. I think it's such a great nude palette. This one was sort of like a repeat of the first one, but with a new formula that was really crap. They've got these sort of iridescent sheer topper shades. There's one there, one there, and one there. They really did nothing and they just seal up in the pan. They're not nice. And I felt like this was, besides this one shade, which is surfboard, it's like this mauvey purple shade with this gold sort of shimmer. I think that's really beautiful. I'm going to try to pan that and then like get rid of this palette because it was just so redundant compared to the first. And the new shades were actually a downgrade. So I don't understand why they released this. It's not, in my opinion, worth buying. Um, I also really hated the NARS Holiday Palette. I'll have it on the screen. I actually returned that. I hated it so much. Um, it just was really muddy. Like, the colors just muddied together. Um, the shimmers were really lackluster. When you layered the shimmers over the matte, they just sort of dusted off. That was a really horrible palette, which is a real shame because their palette from 2021 was so good. Um, so I really love NARS eyeshadow formula in general, but that one was not good whatsoever. Another product that I don't have, because I think I decluttered it, um, talking about how much I love these products from Hindash, his shimmery eyeshadow that he brought out earlier in the year. It's like, I love the shade. It was like this beautiful, neutral, um, sort of peachy champagne color. It was a really, really beautiful shade. Um, it was a shimmery liquid eyeshadow. You could also use it as like a sparkly highlighter. Um, I didn't like that consistency. I found that it was almost impossible to build up to look quite bold on the eye. I found that it, um, when you did build it up, it started, started, started looking really chunky on the eye. Um, and I found that when you did blend it out, it sort of blend away to almost nothing. So it was a very fickle eyeshadow. So even though I love these, these matte ones, these um, uh, color fluids, the one that I have on the screen, I did not like. That was a fail for me. I was not a fan. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about as a fail is these um, L'Oreal True Match Nude Plumping Tinted Serums. I tried two of these. I will try to pan these because I think if I mix them with something else, I could make them work. But on their own, they were so dry on me and they would flake off my face. Now, the only thing I can conclude is that the hyaluronic acid in this... For some reason, my skin doesn't like the top layer of um, whatever's on my face. Having hyaluronic acid in it because I had the same issue with the, um, what was it called? The By Terry loose powder with hyaluronic acid. Whenever I use that to set my base, it'd make my, my base literally flake off my face because it would be so dry. So hyaluronic acid, it sort of absorbs moisture. Um, so it's good if you lay a hyaluronic acid underneath something moisturizing, like a serum underneath a moisturizer. I only bought these because they were crazy raved about, and it must be to do with your climate or your skin type. Um, these can work on some people and they look beautiful, but on me, um, I bought the two because I was in between the two shades. Um, they just looked like a dry, flaky mess. So obviously my skin doesn't like hyaluronic acid in makeup. Um, Again, I'm going to try to pan these and make it work by mixing them with something that's a little bit more dewy and hydrating. Um, but I, yeah, I wanted to love these and I, I didn't. So yeah, for me, this was a fail. For some people, these are probably in their top products of the year. Um, but if you have tried this and you don't like it, um, it just might be that the hyaluronic acid is like sucking the moisture out of your skin and making you dry rather than actually holding moisture from like other skincare or the atmosphere and making you quite plump. Um, and I just found that, yeah, these did not work for me. All right, so that's my recap of the products I've been loving and reaching for a lot in 2022 and the products that I was pretty disappointed by. Um, to be fair, this year hasn't been a big makeup year for me. Um, I've been, I was pregnant most of the year and um, had a baby and did all this and blah, 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 and been busy. So um, I don't, I'm not wearing as much makeup. I'm not trying as much makeup, but the stuff that I did really like, I really, really enjoy and I will continue to use. Um, but yeah, sorry, this was rushed. If I forgot some stuff and you're like, Kat, I thought you loved this. Um, you might be right. <laughs> I did keep a running tally of things that I've been enjoying, but this is a very rushed video. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do my nails. I, I don't know what's going on. I had lipstick on my teeth for half this video. Um, 
It's my life at the moment. But I'd love to know what your favorite products and your fails, if you've got any fails um, of the year were, because I love seeing them and taking them as recommendations. And um, I will list all the products and any reviews I've done uh, in the description box. So if you missed anything, I forgot to say a name, I forgot to talk about a review, they'll all be in there. So I'll see you in the next one and hopefully you have a happy and safe new year. Bye.